Good morning, Titans. Today is Friday, October 4th. I'm Brooke Carrick. And I'm Jamie Hughes. So, Brooke, have you filled out your college apps? Well, I'm working on it, Jamie. Get on it, Brooke. I will, I will. <laughs> Let's get started with the show. A romance has blossomed in our very own dance studio. Reporters Sean Harry and Isaiah Weatherford have the story. The gym is quiet and everybody is looking at the floor to see the performance. Brian Dang and Katie Gallegos take their places and get ready to perform. The music comes on and they begin to do what they love to do, dance. They jump and kick and give all they can to make the performance perfect. However, afterwards, they are more than just friends and dance. They have formed a healthy relationship as boyfriend and girlfriend. Juniors Brian Dang and Katie Gallegos have been friends since middle school. They share many interests including their love of dance. They are very positive influences on each other and they make each other very happy. She really is a big influence on me because I'm, I really try to learn stuff and um, I really try to do a lot of stuff. I like to create stuff and she really helps me with that process. She supports me every day. It makes me a better person. He's a great accountability partner. So anytime I feel like doing something stupid, he stops me. And he, he'll pray with me and he reads with me. And so I, he's just always there for me. Dang and Gallegos met in with a school through their involvement in dance. Gallego saw Dang's dedication to dance and she began to introduce him to members of her family. He was a new student from Oklahoma in sixth grade. And um, I introduced myself and I said, Hi, my name's Katie. And from there, we just started hanging out and became really good friends. Um, it was sixth grade, ever since then, we started hanging out. She's like my best friend. And um, she invited me to hang out with her and her brothers because they dance. And we just kicked it off from there. Dance is definitely an important factor in their relationship. From their beginning, dance has always just kept them close. It's just sort of our common ground. We can always dance. Honestly, through dance, I've learned a lot about her without her really um, verbally telling me stuff. And, like, I'll study the way she acts when she's dancing. I guess we just really relate to each other. Like, we know that how much time dancing takes out of our lives and how passionate we are about it. So we're very understanding of like, time consumption. In and outside of dance, Dang and Gallegos continue to have positive influences on each other and help each other. Whether it's inviting them to do something new or critiquing a dance move, they know they can count on each other. Really well together. They work very good. Like They complement one another. Like When Brian dances and she dances and they dance together, it's like peanut butter and jelly. Well, we do the same style of dancing, which is cramping, so we get to make like make combos together and laugh together and so he'll show me something and I'll help him refine it and I'll show him something and he helps me refine it and we really support each other anytime there's a crump event, any battles, any jams, we like to compete together so I guess it's just something we really relate to. Sometimes I'll show her something and I'll make a combo and I'll be like, hey is this cool? And she'll be like, oh it's okay. But then when she shows us all, I'm like, oh yeah that's real tight. And so just, uh, she just, uh, she's real with me, I'm real with her when we dance, and um, she lets me know what looks good and what doesn't, and it's vice versa for me and her. Whether it's on stage or backstage, Brian Dang and Katie Gallegos are always there for each other. Their love for dance and for each other can only make their relationship grow stronger. Signing off for your Channel 5 Titan T News, I'm Isaiah Weatherford. Students all over Antelope have siblings that they share the campus with. But imagine coming to school and seeing your own dad. Reporters Hannah Flugstad and Marian Sargas filed this story. Balancing life at home and school is a challenge for any student. However, for sophomore Marley Morales and sister senior Kayla Morales, the line between home and school is often blurred because they go to school with their father, math teacher, weight training instructor, and varsity football coach, Mike Morales. Attending school with dad has its disadvantages, but it also has its perks as well. Seeing my dad on campus, it's just, I don't see him very often. Um, sometimes I've ha I'll have him as a sub, but it's it's not very different from um, what it was before he worked here. I know that I get my work done every night because of him, like always checking up on me. I'm around. It's um, it's just what I'm used to. Um, usually, if I need help with something, he's like right down the hall, so it's pretty convenient. The disadvantages of him being at this school is that he checks up on me a lot and he messes, he messes around with me a lot. He sees me, he'll like push me or like 
hug me in front of all my friends and make me feel really awkward. I'll see him uh, just hanging out with uh, some of my teachers. That's the, probably the weirdest part, but there's not much of a difference. With him working here, it kind of bothers me that my teachers know who I am on the first day of school and know how I am with my schoolwork. From a father's perspective, teaching in the same school environment as his daughters can have many benefits. Mr. Morales enjoys being around his daughters even though he does not teach them. I, I enjoy talking to their teachers and, and going to jam them up and making sure that they're in line and doing their homework and obviously I do the home link like bo most parents do. Um, but I also have access to those teachers immediately if there's a situation. And they like to tell me when they have detention and homework club and things like that, so that's always great too. I see them in line, I kind of, well we're a rough family, so I kind of shove them around a little bit, but I also try to hug them and, and make sure that when their friends say hi and they try to hide from me, I make sure I go over there and talk to them and, and give them a big hug and, and just try to embarrass them, but just uh, good fatherly love stuff that teenagers don't want to see or, or understand or let other teenagers know that they actually have parents and uh, I try to embarrass them and show them that. I don't change it very much. Uh, teaching, coaching, parent, I'm kind of the same person. I, I, I push real hard whether it's my students or my own kids um, or even my wife you know, or myself. So I push uh, everybody around me uh, to excel and um, so I'm pretty much the same all the way around. I'm Marianne Sargas signing off for your Channel 5 Titan TV News. The district is offering Military Academy Night in the cafeteria. Representatives from West Point, Air Force, U.S. Navy, U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Merchant Marine, as well as representatives from Congressman McClintock's office will be there. They will be presenting overviews of each academy program and answering your questions. It starts at 6.30 p.m., so come out if you're interested in serving your country. KC Prep for Juniors and Seniors continues until October 31st. You can go to room L111 from 2.45 to 3.45 p.m. after school. See counselor Libby Cook for a login and password. In preparation for homecoming week, student government is hosting a movie night this evening. Reporters Charles Lemon and Alex Bittner talk to senior DJ Hollingshead for more detail. So it's an ASB movie night and it's mainly just for like ASB recognition. And anybody can come, it's free, it's in the cafeteria at 6 o'clock, uh, we're going to play the movie at 6.15, we're playing Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. So if any of you like haven't seen Harry Potter, it's like a good introduction to Homecoming, I think, you know, just so if you don't know, you can come and watch. Uh, if you have an ASB card, you get a free food and snack, or free drink and snack, so just, you're welcome to come. If you're all aware of the Harry Potter Homecoming theme beginning October 14th, Come spend the evening at Hogwarts on October 18th from 9 to 11.30 p.m. after the homecoming football game. Tickets are on sale for $5 with ASB and $7 without. They will go up to $8 with ASB and $10 without on Monday, so be sure to buy your tickets today. Now over to Marianne Sargas with Sports Corner for your weekly sports update. I'm Marianne Sargas with this week's Sports Corner. The varsity football team won its second consecutive game win at home by defeating RMEO 49-7 last Friday. Reporter Chris Howell was there and has a story. Coming off a comeback win, Antelope was looking to repeat with another win. The Titans came out hot in the first quarter, with senior Adrian Tristan catching a touchdown pass to put the Titans up 7-0. Armio responded with an 82-yard touchdown run, their first touchdown of the whole season. Antelope's offense was stopped before they reached the end zone, but once Armio took over, they fumbled the ball and senior Anthony Bumgart sprinted into the end zone to put the Titans up 14-7. Antelope forced Armio to a three and out defensively, and the Titans quickly rushed downfield 
with senior Titus Finson rushing in a 22-yard touchdown run to put Antelope up 21-7. Once Armio got the ball back, they quickly fumbled the ball again and allowed Antelope's Titus Vinson to run in another touchdown from 10 yards out for a second of the night, putting Antelope on top 28-7. Armio got the ball back again, but their troubles continued as they fumbled the ball away. Allowing Tyler McCombs to complete a pass to senior Jake Perther for a first down. Pass is complete. McCombs to number five. And then a touchdown, putting the Titans up 35 to 7. Antelope forced Armiel to a quick three and out again, forcing a point which allowed for another quick drive down the field by Antelope that resulted in a touchdown for junior Mr. Harrio. To put Antelope up, 42 to 7. On the kickoff, Armelio returned the ball to the 25-yard line, but then fumbled and gave Antelope great field position to allow junior Jacob Hurd to put the Titans up 49-7, the final score of the game. Jacob Hurd. Tonight against Armio, we came out. It was an overall team win. Our offense put up big points. Our defense got uh, important stops when it mattered. Special teams handled the ball really well. I'm proud of everybody. Uh, everybody that worked extremely hard this season was able to get into the game, and I really love that. Uh, it was a nice win tonight. All right, so tonight again against Armio, it was a great team win. All sides of the ball dominated. Uh, the defense got a bunch of turnovers for the offense. Offenses uh, put the ball in the end zone, and that's that's what you want out of your out of your defense and offense contributing together. Special teams. Joe Strada kicked kicked our field goals after the after our touchdowns, and that's a great uh, win. Graduate Tyler Winston made it onto Sports Center's top 10 countdown on Friday night with the first catch of his college career. Winston is a freshman wide receiver at San Jose State. The varsity girls volleyball team defeated Foothill High three games to none on Tuesday. In other sports news, the tennis team traveled to Mira Loma and lost by seven games to two. The boys' varsity soccer league lost to El Camino High School four games to none. Make sure to come out and support your varsity cross-country team by heading out to Forest Hill High School tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. That's it for this week's Sports Corner. There's no football game tonight because the team is off this week. Now back to Brooke and Jamie. Thanks, Marianne. Don't forget to come out to Coco and Cram next Wednesday from 6 to 8 in the cafeteria. And don't forget that Thursday is a different schedule starting with first and second period and Friday's third and fourth period. Have a wonderful weekend, Titans. And good luck on your midterms. Bye! Bye.